Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about angles related to a circle. This is the first of three parts. We have a lot of information to cover, so I'm going to break it up into three different uh, components. The first, we're going to cover angles uh, that are formed with a vertex on the circle. Second, we're going to talk about uh, the characteristics of angles that are formed and arcs uh, that are formed as a result of uh, angles inside the circle but not at the center of the circle. And then finally we're going to talk about angles that are formed uh, between tangents and secants outside of the circle. So let's get started with part one. So we're going to talk about first uh, angles with vertices on a circle. So we have two of them. One is called an inscribed angle and an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle. So it's on a circle and whose sides are determined by two chords. So chord one, chord two, here is my inscribed angle. All right, the second type of angle uh, that has a vertex on the circle is going to be called a tangent chord angle. So really we had a chord chord angle here and an inscribed angle. Now we have a tangent chord angle uh, and the vertex again is on the circle. You can see my tangent line here, my chord here, the angle formed is going to be this blue area. So tangent chord angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides are determined by a tangent and a chord that intersect at the tangent's point of contact. So let's talk about the characteristics of those angles. So uh, for either an inscribed angle or a tangent chord angle, that angle itself is going to be equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So I have the intercepted arc here uh, is going to be AB, so this uh, distance here from A all the way to B. I can say that the measure of angle CAB then is going to be half of that value uh, or 65 degrees. Well, how do we know that that's true? So let's go through a proof of this theorem. Uh, now there are three components to this. Now there, uh, there's a component where the center lies on the side of the circle, uh, where the uh, center of the circle is outside, and also when it's inside. So we're going to talk about those three proofs individually and we're going to go through each of those three proofs. All right, so the first one uh, center lies on the side of the angle. So center D is on the side uh, of the angle, so the chord AC. All right, so let's start with the proof. I have the, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna prove that uh, two times the measure of BAD is gonna be equal to arc length BC. So first I'm going to say that uh, the measure of angle BDC, this is the central angle and it's angle one, is equal to the measure of the arc length BC. So again, we have the central angle here. We've already defined that uh, the length of the arc is the same as the central angle. So we already know that the length of, uh, or the measure of BC, excuse me, not the length, but the measure of arc BC is going to be the same as the measure of angle BDC. So I can say then also that angle one is going to be equal to angle two plus angle three. So angle one here is BDC is going to be equal to uh, angle B, uh, DBA plus angle DAB. And the reason why I know that is because from a prior chapter we learned that the measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So angle one is going to be equal to angle two plus three. Well I also know because all radii are congruent that AD is going to be congruent to BD. So AD and BD are congruent. I know therefore that angle two and angle three are congruent because if the sides are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. So angle two is congruent to angle three. Well, if angle two is congruent to three, then I can substitute, uh, I can substitute three for two. And now I have angle one is equal to two times. So this is two times angle three. And that's what we're looking for. So angle one is equal to two times angle three, or angle three is one half of angle one, or one half of angle BC. All right, so that's the proof where the center lies on the side of the circle. We're trying to prove that angle BAC, or angle three, is one half of the measure of arc length, or the measure of arc BC. Okay, moving on to the second proof. And this is when the center lies inside of the angle. So the center lies inside of the angle. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line, so my diameter, from A through C to D. And I'm going to use the same concept that I used in the prior proof, uh, 
where the center was on the circle, but I'm gonna use it twice. All right, so you gotta stick with me here. Uh, now I have angle one and angle two, four are two central angles. Angle one is equal to the measure of uh, BD and angle four is equal to the measure of DE. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in the prior proof where the center lies or lied on, on top of uh, the angle or a side of the angle. So I'm gonna say angle one is uh, gonna be congruent to angle two plus three. So angle one, my external angle, equal to the sum of my remote interior angles, and angle four equal to the sum of their remote interior angles, five and six. All right now I can say that angle two and angle three are congruent. Two and three are congruent because already I have a circular congruent. I have two sides of my triangle that are congruent, so if the sides are congruent, the angles opposite them are congruent. And then by the same fashion, I can say uh, that angle five and six are also congruent. So I can say angle two and three are congruent. So angle one is equal to two times angle two, and angle four is equal to two times angle five. And by the same reasoning and substitution, I can figure out that the measure of angle BE is gonna be two times angle two plus angle five. So two times angle two plus angle five, which is the measure of BAC, is gonna be equal to the measure of BE. All right, so that's our second of the three. And then the last one is gonna be where the center lies on the outside of the angle. So we're trying to figure out the measure of angle BAC. And I've just drawn a diameter here uh, because we're, now we're gonna use subtraction, but the same principle that we used in the first two proofs. All right, so you gotta stick with me on this one. Uh, I have the measure of BDC is equal to the measure of angle BC. So BDC is gonna be equal to the measure of BC. And uh, again, I'm trying to prove I'm trying to prove, and I wrote this in here for you, that the measure of angle six here, BAC, is going to be equal to one half the measure of angle two, which is a central angle, or equal to one half of uh, the measure of arc BC. All right, so I have angle one is going to be equal to angle three plus four. So again, I have two remote interior angles equal to uh, the sum of which are equal to the exterior angle, angle one. And I say angle one plus two, BDE, is going to be equal to the sum of the remote interior angles, angle five plus four plus six. Then I can say angle five is congruent to angle four plus six, uh, or equal to angle four plus six. And I can say angle three is equal to angle four. So I have the, uh, again, I have already are congruent. I have two isosceles triangles, one in DAC and then another in BDA. So I can say that the angles opposite the congruent sides are gonna be congruent. So angle five is congruent to angle four and six. The measures are gonna be equal. Angle three is congruent to angle four. The measures are gonna be equal. So now I can use substitution and I can say that angle one, if angle one is equal to angle three plus angle four, then I can say that an angle three and four are congruent. I can say that angle one is going to be equal to two times angle four. I can also say angle, if angle one plus two is equal to angle four plus six plus five, and angle five is congruent to angle four and six, then I can say angle one plus angle two is equal to two times angle four plus angle six. All right, well, I wanna figure out what the measure of angle two is, because that's our central angle. So angle two is gonna be this piece here minus this piece here. So angle two plus one minus angle one should give us angle two. So I have angle two ends up being two X or two times angle four plus angle six minus two times angle four. That leaves us with angle two is equal to two times angle six, right? And that's what we need here. We need uh, the measure of angle six is a half measure of angle two and half of the measure of uh, BC. So if I mul multiply all these here in blue by two, I end up with two times the measure of angle six is equal to the measure of angle two, which is equal to the measure of arc BC. Okay, that's it for the first installment of angles related to the circle. Again, we talked about, in this particular topic, we talked about angles uh, whose vertex lies on the circle, and then the relationship to the arc length of the, 
arc that's cut by the two chords um, or by the tangent and the chord.